The Interpretation of Financial Statements Mr. Purple Tutorial Question with Suggested Solution So in this question, Mr. Purple, we're going to look first of all at the income statement. So here we have the income statement and we have a fairly standard income statement and in this column here we have the financial information for the year ended 31st of December 2019 and to the right of that we have the financial information for the year ended 31st December 2018. Down here we have the statement of financial position and it is assets equals to capital liabilities and again we have the financial information for the year ended 31st December 2019 and over here to the right the financial information for the year ended 31st December 2018. Now if we just move on a little bit the question asks us to calculate the following ratios for 2019 and 2018. So the first three ratios we have here the gross profit ratio, the net profit ratio and the return on capital employed they are considered to be profitability ratios. The next group we have, the current ratio and the asset test ratio, they are considered to be liquidity ratios. And then the final three down here, inventory days, receivables days, and payable days, they are the activity or the efficiency ratios. So we're going to start off with the three profitability ratios. Now to set it up, I'm going to have three columns. I'm going to have one column for the ratios themselves. That'll be this column here. I'll have a column for the ratios for 2019 and a column for the ratios for 2018. So down in the, in the profitability ratios column, I'm going to write out the ratios I'm going to calculate plus I'm going to put in the formulas. So the gross profit ratio, which is gross profit divided by sales multiplied by 100. I have the net profit ratio, which is net profit divided by sales multiplied by 100. And I have the return on capital employed, ROCE, which is net profit divided by capital employed multiplied by 100. Now a little asterisk there on the capital employed. Capital employed can be tricky to calculate sometimes, so you need to remember the capital employed is the owner's capital plus long-term loans. Now we'll calculate the ratios. So for the gross profit ratio, I need the gross profit and the sales. Both of those are in the income statement. So if I go back to the income statement here, I can see there's my gross profit figure and there's my sales figure. So I'm going to pop both of them in here. If I put those in, what I'll have is the gross profit figure, 163,072 divided by the sales, multiplied by 100, and that gives me a gross profit ratio of 20%. The net profit ratio, well, that information is also in the income statement. I've just used the sales figure, so I don't need really to look that up again, but I'll go and find the net profit figure. And the net profit figure is here. There it is there. So I'm going to pop that in here. So what I'll have is... The net profit, 58,843, divided by the sales, multiplied by 100. Remember, of course, all profitability ratios are expressed as percentages. And that gives us, sorry, went a bit far ahead there. That gives us 7.22%. And then the return on capital employed, that'll be the net profit, because I just calculated that a second, I worked, used that a second ago, and the capital employed, so I need to go and work out my capital employed. So back to my statement of financial position. And there's my capital. So that's the figure there is the capital figure. And then the 80,000 is the long-term loans, the non-current liabilities. So I'm going to add those two together. I'll divide the net profit by those figures. So we'll go back here. And what I have here is 58,843, the net profit, 
divided by 264,415, which is the owner's capital plus the long-term loans. The whole thing is multiplied by 100, and that'll give us 22.25%. Now, at this stage, you could pause the video tutorial and you could put in here, put in your figures for the 2018 um, ratios, and then check them in a few seconds. But we will move on ahead. So the gross profit to sales figure, well, that's coming from over here. So here's the 2018 columns. There's the gross profit and there's the sales figure. So I'm going to pop those in. Gross profit, 145,600 divided by the sales, multiplied by 100, gives us 20%. The next ratio, put in here, net profit divided by the sales. Well, I just used the sales figure up here. So if I go back and I need the net profit. So here we have it here. 48,110. So if I pop that in here, we have 48,110 divided by the sales figure, which of course we just used up here. 728,000 multiplied by 100, which gives us 6.61%. And then finally, the return on capital employed, which is the net profit figure, which I already have that. So I need to go back to my statement of financial position to get the capital employed. And it's going to be these two figures here. The capital and the long-term loan. So what I'll do is I will pop them in here. So 48,110 being the net profit. And the capital employed, 239,380, multiplied by 100, which gives me 20.13%. Okay, next we'll have the liquidity ratios. So, under liquidity ratios, we're going to have two ratios that we mentioned earlier, and the setup is the same. I'm going to have a column for the ratios themselves, where I write out the little formulas. I have the calculations for 2019. And the calculations for 2018. So let's just put in the ratios, the current ratio, current assets divided by current liabilities and expressed as a proportion to one. The liquidity ratios we're looking at here will always be expressed as something to one. And then with the asset test ratio, which is the current assets less the inventory divided by current liabilities and expressed as a proportion to one. So if we pop in the figures for 2019, current assets, current liabilities, I'm going to find those in the statement of financial position. So go back here, and I have current assets there, and this figure here is the total for my current assets, and down here I have current liabilities, and this figure here is the total for my current liabilities. So if I pop those in here, I'll have current assets, 224,224 divided by the current liabilities, 99,809, expressed as something to 1, and that works out at 2.25 to 1. And for the asset test ratio, I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm going to remove the inventory from the current uh, assets. So let's go back here. So it'll be this figure here, 224, 224 minus. 122,304 are, it'll be the receivables and bank added together. It's the same thing. So if we pop that number in, we have 224,224 minus the 122,304 divided by the current liabilities. Of course, that number hasn't changed. And that'll work out as 1.02 to 1. Okay, so what you could do here again, like in the last time, is that you could actually pause the uh, video now and have a go at the 2018 figures, but we will move ahead. So I'm going back to get the figures for 2018. So here are the current assets, 200,200, and the current liabilities down here, 120,820. So if I pop them in. Current assets, 200,200, divided by the current liabilities, 
120,820, and that will give us 1.66 to 1. And the current liabilities, uh, I beg your pardon, on the asset test, I'm going to have the current assets less the inventory. So back here for the 2018 figures, there are the current assets. And there's the inventory, so I'll take one away from the other. Or again, like the last time I said, we can add the receivables and the pack together. So if I put those figures in, we would get a ratio of 0 0.75 to 1. Okay, finally, we're going to look at the activity are sometimes referred to as efficiency ratios. The layout will be the same. We've got our three columns. We have the first column here where we will write down the ratios and then we have the figures for 2019 and to the right of that the figures for 2018. So if we pop in our ratios we have the inventory days which is inventory divided by cost of sales multiplied by 365. We have the accounts receivable days which is accounts receivables divided by sales multiplied by 365 and the accounts payable days which is the accounts payable divided by purchases multiplied by 365. So you note that all of these ratios, well all three of them, are going to be expressed as days. Now if we get the figures, inventory and cost of sales, that will be in the income statement. Now in this example we're using the closing inventory. You might notice in some textbooks they might use average inventory. But we're going to use the closing inventory. So there's the closing inventory there and just over here we have the cost of sales, that figure there, 652288. So if we go and pop those numbers in. So there's 122,204 euro worth of inventory on the shelves on the last day of the year. The value of the goods sold throughout the year came to 652,288 euro. If I multiply that by 365, I get 68.4 days which is telling us that there's approximately 68.4 days worth of inventory sitting on the shelves. The accounts receivable, well accounts receivables, they're, they're, they're the, the, the debtors, they're the, that's the current asset. So I'm going to go back to my statement of financial position and under current assets I will find my receivables, 89,620. I'll be dividing that by the sales figure right up the top here, top of the income statement, 815,316. 360. So I pop that in. So there we have the accounts receivable from current assets. We have the sales figure from the top of the income statement, and that gives us 40.2 days, which means that on average, the people we sell goods to on credit are paying us in about 40 days. And then finally, the accounts payable days. Accounts payable, of course, is a current liability. So if we go down here, current liabilities. There's the accounts payable, 99,809. And the purchases figure, there it is there in our income statement. Purchases, 665,392. So we'll pop that in here. 99,809 being the accounts payable. Divided by the purchases, multiplied by 365. That gives us 54.8 days which means that we are paying our suppliers, on average, in about 54.8 or 55 days. Okay, so what you could do now, is like, we, like I've recommended before, is you could pause the video and have a go at the 2018 figures. But we will just fire ahead now and do them. So, putting in the 2018 figures, well, inventory days. Here we go, we're going to the inventory and the cost of sales. Both of those are available to us in the... Um, income statement so there's the closing inventory remember i mentioned earlier we're using the closing inventory and there's the cost of sales okay so the two figures i want so i will pop them in over here 109,200. that's the closing inventory divided by the cost of sales multiplied by 365 gives us 68.4 days the accounts receivable remember accounts receivable is a current asset so under current assets, there's the accounts receivable figure. And I'm going to divide that by the sales, 728,000. So 80,080 divided by 728,000 multiplied by 
365, and that gives us 40.2 days. And then finally, the accounts payable. So here we are, we're doing this ratio here. And accounts payable, of course, at liabilities. So here they are here, 120,820. And of course, that will relate to the purchases figure, which is 604,100. So if I pop that in here, 120,820 is the accounts payable, divided by the purchases, multiplied by 365, gives us 73 days. Okay, that is Mr. Purple, tutorial question and solution. Thank you.